nation. Hebrew Kingdom Building. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Let's see. Um, 40 people are watching on YouTube, yet my thing is that nobody's on there. No, they're all waiting. I'm in the chat room. Okay. All right. Sorry, y'all. We had to get, we take care of some um, stuff before we got going. So we're going back into Romans um, today. And we just gonna go. We're gonna, I'm gonna have all the precepts. By the way, anybody that's new, when I say precept, a precept is a um, in scripture. We've been taught. I'm just being honest. We've been taught wrong about scripture. Okay, because scripture. Well, let me do this, y'all. This is gonna be confusing if I don't do this. All right. So there's a difference between. Scripture and the New Testament. Okay, now that don't mean that they both that they they they, unis, they uh, they not holy or uninspired. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they have different purposes. Okay, if you go to the old if the Old Testament is not one book. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's um you got you got the Torah and then you got the Pentateuch, right? You got the prophets. You got the um you got the writings, Telephim. So you got different. Categories, even in the Old Testament, you got the law, which is you know, and the prophets, which can consider to be the Torah. I mean, the prophets consider to be a different thing, but you can consider that to be one one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got the writings. It's all holy and it's all inspired and it's all of them up from Most High, but they have different a different function. So even when you're talking about um, um, the uh, disciples, the disciples then told you this. If you look at their writings, they tell you this. Let me read it for you right quick before we get started. All right. <laughs> Second thoughts. Somebody read Second Thessalonians two verse fifteen. Read it for me. Hey, hey y'all, lines. Yeah. Uh, yes, fifteen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians. I'm in Timothy. Hold on. Yeah. Um. Second Thessalonians. Uh. Two verse fifteen. Therefore, brothers, stand fast and hold the traditions which were being taught, which by the word of the epistle, of our epistle. Say it again. Read it again for me. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which we have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Whether by word or what? Our word or our epistle. epistle. So the word and the epistles are two different things. Mm -hmm. Everybody catch that? The word and the epistles are two different things. Even so, Shaul is right, and he's telling you that. The person who wrote the letters is telling you that they're two different things. Now, they're both holy, they're both righteous, and they're both inspired of the most high, but they have two different purposes. Mm -hmm. The word, if you study the word, word, the word is going to go back to the Torah. That's what it's going to go back to. The word means Torah. So it's going back to the Torah. So that's why he said traditions. So where are the traditions located? In the Torah. Mm -hmm. Right? Whether you've been taught, whether by word or Torah or epistle. The word epistle means letter. So what we read in the New Testament, we, we see um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Those are testimonies, actually. But when you get into um, uh, Corinthians, you get into Galatians, all these things. These things are epistles. These are letters that are written. Everybody got me? Mm -hmm. So anytime you're reading the letter, the letter can't counteract the word. Everybody got me? The letters are explanations of the word. The letter is the explanation of Torah. The Torah ain't the explanation of the word. I mean, the Torah ain't the explanation of the letter. It's not the other way around. Everybody got me? Let's say I said, hey, look, I need y'all to study, um, give me a book, of Mice and Men, something like that. Somebody read of Mice and Men. They read that book. I say, okay, do a book report. All right, they do the book report. Now, is the book report the book, or is the book the book? The book, the book. 
The book is the book. The book report is an explanation of what's in the book. Right. Yeah. Can the book report say anything different than what the book says? No. If it's a report Should on the book. Can the book report have a different narrative than what's in the book? No. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't, it but it can. And if, if it did, someone else writing it and putting yeah. their own opinion. So you just you just explain to me what I, you just explain it without me have to explain it. If they put their what? Their own opinion. Mm-hmm. Their own interpretation is what Christians say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if it's a book report on the book, and again, if the book is the Torah, right, and the letters are um. And the letters are written on the Torah, so the letters should have to always line up with Torah. Anytime you're reading and, and the um, letters seem like it's saying something different than what the Torah, Torah is saying, that means that you haven't properly understood it. That's all it means. That, it ain't nothing wrong with that. That means, you know, that's why Scripture says we search the Scriptures for in them we find, we, you know, we think we have eternal life. So that just means we need to dig deeper. But um, so going back to the word precept, so this is why Scripture says that it's, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. So when you write the letters, what the, what the letters are doing is giving you what they call precepts. They're giving you Cliff notes, bookmarks. Mm-hmm. So they say, like Fences, Shaul will say something. He'd be like, as it is written, and, and oh, it'll say OC, but it means Hosea. Or he says, he says something, he said, as it is written in, um, in uh, um, Isaiah or the prophet Jeremy. You ever see that in the New Testament, says, which is Jeremiah or Jeremiah in Hebrew, or Jeremiah. So, or Jeremiah, you, you know how you want to pronounce it. But going back to that, so when you look at that, so that's what a precept is. So anytime the writer, is giving you a precept. He's giving you a cliff note. He's telling you, go back and read. Mm-hmm. Everybody say, go back and read. Go back and read. So anytime he's telling you, and he says, a cliff note, that means go back and read. And whatever he's talking about, he wants you to read that to understand what he's talking about. He don't mean to read. We ain't supposed to be reading. He said, oh, as it says, as it says in um, Jeremiah, oh, okay, we we'll just keep going. So he's mean, nah, go back and read Jeremiah to understand what I'm talking about. Because he gives you the context. It gives you the context. When you understand that, then the scripture going to make sense. If you go at, if you come up with your own context outside of the cliff notes or the precepts that he gave you, you're gonna be off. All right? So today, hold on a second, y'all. We're gonna go, we're gonna read eight and nine and ten. And we got I got the precepts listed. So every time we hit the precept, we're just gonna go there. Um let me read this real fast. Let me go and pray. And sorry, y'all, that chat ain't showing up on the screen. Um, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out why it's not doing that. All right. I mean, we just read Isaiah 8, right? Okay. And it says... Um, and many of them, to, let me read this first. Isaiah 8, verse 14 says, And he shall be a sanctuary. This is talking about the Messiah. He shall be a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense for both houses of Israel, and a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, shall fall, and be broken, and snared, and taken. Right? Bind up the testimony. Seal the what? Law among my disciples. All right? Let's see. Now, let's get a witness to that. So now let's go to um, Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28, verse 13, y'all. Y'all there? Just let me know y'all there. All right, go ahead and read it. Go ahead and read um, 13 for me. But the word of Elohim was upon, was upon them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, very little, and they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. And that exact same thing we just read in Isaiah 8. So, this this go back to what Mashiach said when he said that um, he he only spoke to them in parables. Remember the time he spoke to them all in parables and disciples like, why you keep speaking to them in parables? Like, well, what's going on? He said um, that hearing they may not hear, and seeing they may not see, right? That they may be snared and taken. I'm paraphrasing, but that's that's what he says. So what does that mean? He says because it's given to you to know 
the mysteries of the kingdom of Elohim. You see what I'm saying? So what he's saying is, it's, oh, it's your job to know this, right? You have to study. Scripture says he, he's, a, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, mm-hmm. right? So if you're not seeking out this word, these things are going to be, it's going to be a snare. It's going to be a trap to you. You're going to read Paul, and Paul is going to be a snare and a trap to you. And you're going to be taken, and um, you're going to be snared. In other words, you're going to fall. So the Messiah, because it's interesting that he says, um, remember the other scripture says that Messiah is going to be a rock of stumbling, right? And so, and then when he compares him to what? He compares him to the law. Right? Because, and I didn't even get to that too deep, but in just, when you understand the scripture, what you're going to find out is that scripture says that, um, that in the beginning was the what? Word. And the word was what? Mm-hmm. And the word was what? And then later on, it became flesh, right? Mm-hmm. All right? And it dwelt among who? Okay. So, he, again, the word in Hebrew means Torah. So it says the Torah became flesh. Right? And he dwelt among us. So this is the reason why the scripture is line upon line, precept upon precept. Teaching you what? Law. Torah. Teaching. So anyway, so with that being said, let's, um, uh, who want to pray? Somebody pray. It don't matter who. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, our evil thoughts, wicked thoughts, everything we have uh, may have said or done that was an offense to you and others. We ask you, please forgive us as we forgive those who have trespassed and sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 All right, so let's go back to Romans 8. Let's go to Romans 8. It's not, we're not hitting any precepts at 8. We're going to hit them, hit them in 9 and 10. But we need to recap about um, what Shao was saying. So um, everybody that's, that's first time here um, learning this or being in this um, teaching, we talked about, um, it's called Saving Shaul, and we're going back through, Shaul is, name, is Paul's real name, right? So we're going back through the scriptures, and we're seeing that we done prove without a shadow of doubt that, that Shaul says, he said, he makes quotes like, the law is spiritual. Right. He goes on to talk about how we established the law when we talked about that. We talked about how um, he was addressing the two groups of Israelites, the Israelites who had fell away, who did who, like us, who forgot the identity and all that kind of stuff was come back into the, into the um, fold. And he was also addressing the Yahudim, which are the people called it Jews. The Jews, by the way, if anybody haven't heard this before, the Jews is not the whole nation of Israel. The Jews is one tribe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one tribe. There's 12 tribes. <clears throat> And the Jews or the Yahudim is one. There's one tribe. So the rest of the tribes, um, sometimes they call Israel. Sometimes they call, um, uh, in, in the text, sometimes they call them Gentiles. And we done addressed that before because if you go look up the word Gentile, there's a couple different words for the word Gentile. One of them is, is called Helene, which goes to the word Hellenist. And all that means is that they're, um, they're Greek speaking and acting Hebrews. They act like Greeks. That's basically what that means. Like if we went, we, if we went to Africa right now, they would call you American. Right? Even though you're technically not American. You're from West Africa. You came from the same place they at. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, which, and them people, originally, we was, we was not even from there. We was from, from, from Israel. But saying that to say still, if you go there, they don't call you, you call you American. Why? Because you speak English. Mm-hmm. And you speak a, a American dialect of English. Right? If you, if you was from, if you lived in Great Britain, they would call you British. Mm-hmm. There's a British brother here, even though you're not British. Mm-hmm. So the same thing, they called them Greeks. Or they call, and sometimes they call them Greeks, sometimes they would call them Gentiles because they act like the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I ain't getting, getting all that because we never finish if I rehash all that. But let's go ahead and re- read through Romans 8. All right. <clears throat> now, man. All right, I'm going to read 7 and 25, and I'm going to the next chapter. I thank Elohim through Yehoshua HaMashiach, our, our master. So then with the mind, I serve what? The law, the, the law of what? Yeah. Of God. Right? Yeah. But with the flesh, I serve what? The law of All right? Chapter 8. Therefore, there was no condemnation of them who walk in Yehoshua HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right? For the law of the spirit of life in Mashiach have made me free from what? The law of 
And we, if, if you're new to this, we talked about in the other chapter, he talked about how the law of sin and death is the sin that's in your body. It's not the, the, the law, the Torah. It's the sin that's in your body that makes you do the things that you shouldn't do. Okay? He calls it the law of sin and death. Verse 4. In the, <clears throat> my bad, verse 3. And what the law cannot do in that was weak through the flesh, Elohim sent his own son a likefulness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. That the, we go back to definitions also. Um, I don't have to pull that up, but if you look up the definition of the word righteousness in Hebrew, this is a doc. In, in Greek, it's um, dik i yoma. And if you go look up the definition, it's going to go back to a word that means lawful. Lawful. Zadok means lawful. And as a matter of fact, if you go look up Zadok, we'll say those who keep the laws and commandments. So when we read the word righteousness, we're going to read the definition so it makes more sense. So that the lawfulness of the law may be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Remember he said with the, with the flesh he serves the law of sin and death. And with the spirit he follows the law of, of God, right, or Elohim. For they that are the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit of things of the spirit. Well, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, or the fleshly mind, is an enemy of Elohim. Why? So I read, read it for me in verse 7. For it is not subject to the law of God. It is what? Not subject to the law of Yah. All right, so he's telling you that your flesh, first of all, he said there's a, your flesh is evil, and he goes and says there's no good thing in your flesh, and he's telling you that your flesh is not subject to the law. So everything that your flesh does or the works of the flesh is the works of sin, right? Which are also the, the works outside of law. Everybody got me? So that's the reason why we're going back to the covenant. We've got to keep the law because sin, according to the Bible, is the breaking of the law or the transgression of the law. So that's why he said your flesh is not subject to the law. It don't want to be. So that's why you need the Ruach or you need the spirit. So your, your spirit can what, allow you to so, um, kill the deeds of the flesh. Everybody got me? Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh. Let me read again. Verse 7. For the carnal mind is the enemy of Elohim. It is not subject to the law. So if you're not subject to the law, what does it tell you? You are enemy of Elohim. Now, church done told you that you ain't under no law. You ain't got to keep no law. Mm -hmm. Shaul says that if you don't keep the law, you're an enemy. Mm -hmm. Everybody got me? Mm -hmm. And how do we know this? The penalties of, of not keeping the law has destroyed us, even until this day. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verse 9. But you're not in the flesh, but in this ruach. Let's check this out. If, if, everybody say if. Yeah. So be that the ruach of Elohim or the spirit of God dwell in you. That's an if. That doesn't mean that it's guaranteed that everybody had the spirit of God. Everybody don't. Everybody also is not the children of Elohim. Mm -hmm. They're not, everybody not the children of God. That's a lie. They, I know people sing the song at church, but it's not true. All right? <laughs> well, again, if Christ be in you, right? My bad. Verse 9. For you're not in the flesh, but in the Ruach. Ruach means spirit, y'all. If so, that the Ruach of Elohim dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Ruach of Christ, he is what? No, no, he is. So, now, if the spirit is leading you to keep the law, and your flesh is trying to get you not to keep the law, and, and you say that I have the spirit, the spirit need to be doing what? Keeping, keeping the, the, law. the law. Bring you into keeping the law. That's why scripture says that the spirit is going to lead and guide you in all truth. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 11. But the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwell in you. My bad. Verse 10. If Mashiach be in you, the body is what? Dead. Dead. Because of sin. Because the spirit is for the spirit is life because of lawfulness. Lawfulness. So the spirit is gonna get you what? To kill the deeds of the flesh. And everything that's the the deeds of the flesh are iniquity and sin. Everybody know that. So what's sin? Transgression of the law. See how it's it's almost like a chain. One thing connects to the next thing. So you say, well, okay. Um I, I'm killing the deeds of the flesh. What are deeds of the flesh? The deeds of the flesh are sin. Anybody will tell you that it's sin. So what's sin? Sin is transgression of the law. So what that means is keep the law. That's what it means. Verse 11. But if the Ruach of him raised up Yahushua from the dead, dwelling in you, he, raised, he that raised up Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken your, your mortal bodies and by spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, I'm going to speed this up, y'all, because I just want to hammer that one point. 
Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to live in the flesh. So if you receive the spirit, you're no longer a debtor. That means you're not, no longer locked in step to have to live in sin. You have the power. The scripture says that when the spirit come upon you, you, you will receive what? Power. 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 Because before you were powerless. Why? Because your spirit, your flesh were overcoming you. So you receive the spirit to what? Kill them deeds of the flesh. All right? Because remember, the flesh ain't subject to the law. The flesh don't want to be subject to the law. That's why you go places and they tell you not to keep the law because they don't want to be subject to the law. <laughs> right? Verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit, they of, of the spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. But let me go back to 13. If, for if you live after the flesh, you shall live. <laughs> but through, but if ye through the spirit do what? Glorify Glorify the deeds of the body. Kill the deeds of the body. Of the body. Then the, de um, the deeds of the body you shall live. Mm -hmm. But as many as led by the rule of Elohim, they the sons of Elohim. For we have not received the spirit of bondage. So he's telling you now. So now you get the context of bondage. People try to tell you, oh, you don't got to keep that law because if you're keeping the law, you in, you in bondage. Have you ever heard, anybody heard this said before? Mm -hmm. That it's bondage? They, 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 um, they got a term for that. They call it um, law keep, not um, legalism. Legalism. Or oh, that's legalism, you bring people into bondage. Bondage is sin. Bondage is sin. And we can go through, we can prove that through precepts if I, if I had time. But bondage is sin. How do we know that? Have anybody ever committed a sin and felt like garbage? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 <laughs> right. Yes. Feel like absolute garbage. Yes. You, and then when you feel like um, feel like garbage, you want to what? Separate yourself. Yeah. That's the first thing. You want to be yeah. by yourself. Yeah. Because you're feeling the shame. So now you're carrying that shame. All that stuff is, is weighing you down. That's why the scripture says it brings you into captivity. It literally has. Like, it's done tied you down. So now you got to be free from that thing. You got to, you, that's what bondage is. Bondage ain't you walking in, walking in Torah because Torah is freedom. Because if you're walking in Torah, then you don't have no guilt. You don't have, you don't have no um, depression. How do you get in depression? You get, a lot of people coming into depression by sins, things that happen in their life. Situations that were, that were wrong that they was put in, sometimes they didn't even have nothing to do with it. You ever see, like, for instance, somebody might be abused by somebody. Right, and after they become abused, it wasn't even their fault. Mm -hmm. But because they participate in that thing, the guilt of that thing mm -hmm. don't weigh them down to a certain to a certain extent. That they even going they going into depression and they can't deal with it, or they and they suppress it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they didn't even commit a sin, but that's that bondage of sin is still on them. Mm -hmm. They done brought them where into captivity. Mm -hmm. They done tied them down, so now they got to be free from that thing. Mm -hmm. So. For you not receive the spirit of bondage, again the fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the spirit itself bear witness um, with our spirit that we are the children of Elohim. And if the children then heirs, and the heirs of Elohim and joint heirs with Mashiach. If so, do we suffer with him. If so, we suffer. That's, that's a big key. Because he that suffered from the flesh has done what? He that suffered in the flesh has what? Sin. Say it again. Sin. Ceased from sin. That's what the scripture says. So when it says if we suffer with Mashiach, that means that what did he do? Mashiach at all points was tempted. Then after that, what well, he crucified his flesh. He put his flesh, he killed his flesh. Everybody understand? So that's why the scripture says that he that suffered in the flesh done ceased from sin. And anyway, let's keep going. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to the glory. I mean, we're, uh, worthy to be compared with the glory that should be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by the reason of who was subjected to the same in hope. Because of the creature itself also should be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. Now you see that? So that's what bondage is. Bondage go with corruption. With corruption come guilt. With guilt comes depression. Um, and, you know, and separation most of the time. And to the glorious liberty of children of Elohim. But we know that, oh, I already read that, my bad. Thir 23. Not only they, but ourselves also had the first fruits. Remember that, because we're going back to that word first fruits in a little bit. Remember that. So who had the first fruits of the, of the, of the Ruach? Israelites. 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 The scripture failed. The scripture tells us that the that Ruach came when? When did the Ruach come? Oh, um, after you're baptized. Right, but when? In, in the timeline. When did it happen? 
We, we see it in the scripture when it happened. Was the day of Pentecost? The day of Pentecost or Shav um, Shavuot, Shavuot, right? Okay. So on the day of Shavuot, that's when the Spirit came, mm -hmm. right? So they, so literally, they're the, the first ones. They were the first ones to receive it. So when he says, um, not only we ourselves who had the first fruits, he's talking about the Yahudim or the Jews. They're the ones who had the first fruits. They're the ones who received the first offering of the Spirit before it went out there, before they start um, ministering to other people and they started receiving it. They, they, that's why the scripture says they had the adoption. What they would do, they would go out and they would witness the people, bring them in. Everybody got me? Um, <clears throat> even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting to the adoption of the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope is not seen, is not hopeful. The man seeing what he did, did that the hope for, I'm sorry. But we that hope, what we see not, we do patiently wait for it. For likewise, the Spirit doth help our, our infirmities, for what we. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for all, with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts knoweth the mind of the Ruach, because he made the intercession for the saints according to the will of Elohim. But we all know that all things work together to good of them who are called according to his purpose. And here we go. For whom he did what? Now this is when it's going to get hairy for some people, because some people ain't going to like this. But that's what it says. For whom he did foreknow. The word foreknew means who already knew or knew them in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, if we get a precept for that, the precept is going, which I didn't in this, it's going to say that the Most High only knew Israel. I'm going to show you scriptures in the Old Testament that says that Israel was the only people that he ever knew. Yeah. Go ahead, if somebody want to read that. It's like, it's not, it's Psalms 146. Uh, yeah. One second. Is it 142 or 146? Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, uh, one four, is it one forty seven nineteen? One forty seven. His word unto uh, your code, his statutes and his judgments okay, yeah, yeah. unto Israel. He has not. 19, he has not dealt so okay. with any nation, and as his judgment, have they not known them? All right, say it. Elohim. Say it again. Say it loud. Say it right here. He showed his word unto your code, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation, and. As for, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye, Elohim. So not only said that um, he hasn't dealt with any other nation, he said they haven't even known him. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you go back, when he says, from whom he did foreknow, my bad, is that where I was at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From whom he did foreknow, he, he also predestinated to, he, to be conformed to the image of his son. So he's telling you that who did he foreknow? He foreknew the Israelites. He didn't know no other people. But those people he conformed, um, to be made in the image of a son, that they might be the firstborn, not the only, not the only, not the only, but the firstborn of many brethren. So they had the first of the fr first fruits. They had the, they had the first received the spirit, and they will be the first who will be conformed in the image of Yahushua. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember, they had the adoption. Their, their job was to go out. Right? Thirty. Moreover, whom we did predestinate, so they go back to predestinate. So we we have a de we are predestined. Our, our, our end has already been spoken. You understand? Mm -hmm. he, whom he also called, whom he, whom he called, he also justified, whom he justified, he also glorified. What should we say to these things? If Elohim be for us, who could be against us? That's talking about us. Now, what, what, in the rest of this chapter, is Shaul basically comforting us. Because from then and now, we've always been persecuted. So when it says that, um, um, I guess I should go ahead and read it. Um, what should we say? What should we say then? These things, if Elohim before us, who can be against us? Who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all? How, sh how should he not give freely us all things? Now, don't make this about. I mean, don't make this about everybody. This scripture is specifically talking about the ones who he foreknew, the ones who he predestinated. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is Elohim who justifies. So let's look at the word elect. If y'all didn't believe me about um, predestined, let's look at the word elect. 
All right, somebody read Isaiah 42, verse 1. My bad, 45, verse 4. And then somebody else read, um, get Isaiah 65, verse 9. So somebody have um, Isaiah 54, verse 4. Somebody get Isaiah 65, verse 9. And somebody else get Isaiah 65, verse 22. Isaiah 45 verse 4. Yes, ma'am. For Jacob, my servant. For Jacob, my servant's sake. And Israel, my elect. His what? My elect. All right. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God or Elohim who justifies. Who got the other verse? And I will bring forth the seed out of Jacob and out of the Judah in inheritance of my mountains. And my elect shall inherit it. And my servant shall dwell there. His what? And they came out of where? Uh, out of Jacob. Out of Jacob. Who got the next one? Well, hopefully you do that. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Mm -hmm. It is Elohim that justifies. Who else got the other verse? Don't forget. Which one is that? Isaiah, what now? Oh, okay. Was it 65 verse 9? Yeah, 65, um, 22. Somebody had just read 29. Somebody read. 22. Um, they shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not sure. plant, and another eat. For as the days of a, of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Is what? Their, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Again, who shall lay anything to the charge of, of Elohim's what? Elect. 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 It is Elohim who justifies. Like I said, people don't like this because they're like, oh, you, you know, you being, you excluding people. We ain't excluding people because we know that the, um, that the people going to have a chance to come in and be saved, be witnessed through this. But the Most High, he wants you to know this. He wants you to know that he, according to scripture, you're the apple of his eye. There's nothing wrong with you knowing these things, that you are the elect, right? Every, everybody has told you that you're the least. You are not the least. <laughs> you are not the tail. You're the head. You just right now, you're on the penalty. But we so we serving our time, and when it's over with, we're gonna be in that. So this shell doing the same thing. He's trying to encourage the people. I got I got to speed up. Who is it that condemneth? It is Mashiach that died. Yeah, that, that rather is risen again. Who's even at the right hand? When we talking about the right hand earlier, mm -hmm. the right hand of Elohim, who also make an intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of, of Mashiach? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For it is written, we are killed all the day long. Are we not? Yeah. Are we not? Yeah. We are killed all the day long. We are counted sheep for the slaughter. Nay, through all these things, the more conquered us through him who love us. For I'm persuaded neither height, nor depth, no angel, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in Yahushua, um, Hamashiach, our uh, master. So let's go to Romans 9. So hopefully we can get through 9. All right. So, again, if y'all get a chance, y'all watch the other videos, and we you know, went through the other chapters. But we, basically what we've proven is, up until now, he's been dealing with Israel, 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 Israel. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to get to the meat of the issue that he's having with Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. Romans verse, uh, Roman 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say a truth in Mashiach, I lie not. Mm -hmm. My conscience also bear me witness in the Ruach HaKodesh. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are what? Israel. Now, he's going to tell you what pertains to the Israelites. Okay? Two pertain to the what? The adoption. And the what? The glory. And the glory? So the glory pertaining to the Israelites. Hmm. And the what? And the covenant. Who is the covenant made to? Israel. Israelites. And the giving of the what? Of the law. Now, why, how could it be? He didn't say, did he say was given or is given? Given. Given. Of the law. Giving. Continually still giving. Giving of the what? Seal up the law among my what? Disciples. Mm -hmm. Disciples. Right? In the service of who? Yeah. And the what? And the promise. All this is to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. The service of Elohim. That means that you're the, per you're the people who's supposed to be leading the services. Mm -hmm. Not the Pope. Not uh, uh, what's the dude that be on tele television? The televangelist guy. Any of them, name them. Amen. You seen all of them. Name them. All of them. Right. Paulo White. Paulo White. 
Uh, what's his name? Uh, Joe Osteen. Joe yeah, Osteen. So. That's the number one. Uh, what's his name? Jeremiah what? Oh, Jeremiah. yeah, Jeremiah dude. Uh, no. Name him. Oh, I, can't, I can't name him. Jeremiah Osteen. I can't think of his last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't watch it anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. They all out of order. Because according to scripture, it's given to you the order of service. That's why the scripture says it calls you a holy nation, a royal priesthood. That's why Messiah said it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. This is your job. This is your inheritance. This is your life. This is your culture. All this is, 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 is who you are. It's, it's for, and, and you think about it, we've, we've always been in that situation. Any kind of like, if you go back and look at the supposed quote unquote spiritual revivals, mm-hmm. it was led by us, but then somebody else took it over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even in, even in our wickedness, even when we was doing other other wicked wicked stuff, we created that kind of same thing. Mm-hmm. But the Most High has put it into you to be in leadership because that's your job. Yeah. It's given to you the law, statutes, commandments, the promises, Correct. the order of service. Mm-hmm. Who's are the Father? And that's gonna get deep now. Mm-hmm. Now, ain't nobody gonna like this next statement either. I ain't making the statement. I didn't write this right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write this. That's right. Who's are the fathers? Mm-hmm. This is and look. This is the reason why Christianity didn't gave you church fathers. Mm-hmm. They're trying to replace the fathers in scripture. Abraham is the father of the faith. Right. Not uh, 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 um, Martin Luther or John Calvin. Mm-hmm. They honor to. Right, so they replaced the Israelites with European westernized leaders. Yep. But anyway, let's get, let's get into it again. Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh, who came? Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Messiah came for the Israelites, mm-hmm. but I thought he came for the whole world. Came for us. Who wrong? <laughs> Whose are the fathers, and whom concerning the flesh Christ came? Hmm. hmm. Who is over all and Elohim blessed and forever? Amen. Mm-hmm. Not as though the word had taken no effect, for they are not Israel who are all Israel. Mm-hmm. Neither they all the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac should, should our seed be called. So what does that mean? Somebody tell me that. What does that mean? He says not that all Israel is not Israel. But he said in the seed, um, not seed it should be called. What does that mean? I mean all Israel don't believe. I mean you can look at it into in a certain extent. But, Wait, because they are all. <laughs> How many seeds did Abraham have? Well, as far as with that, with that yeah, well, yeah, at least three. Yeah, yeah at least three. Yeah, he about three. About yeah, three, three or four. four. Yeah, four. But the four. one that's got the covenant though, was just one. Yeah. Isaac. There you go. Mm-hmm. But in Isaac, shall thy seed be called? Mm-hmm. Abraham not only did, like, say, he had Isaac, he had Ishmael, mm-hmm. um, um, and then he had Midian, mm-hmm. right? So that's three. Um, if you look at it, you can look at it from an element of even, um, that was his grandson, but you can even look at it, Esau was also a seed of Abraham, mm-hmm. but he didn't get the promises, mm-hmm. right? So he says, in thy seed. Now let's, let's keep going. Now, if people, if people really listen to what Shaul was saying, this, this sounds like Shaul was saying something very exclusive. Mm-hmm. That's what it sounds like. Let's keep going. That is that we are the children of the, uh, of the flesh. These are not the children of Elohim, but the children of the promise are counted for the what? That is, that we are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of Elohim. Mm-hmm. But the children of the what? Of the promise. Mm-hmm. Are counted for the seed. Verse 4. Who are Israelites who pertain of the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of Elohim, and the what? Promise. Let's go back. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Elohim, but the children of the promise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For, this, for this word of the promise, at this time, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but Rebekah had also conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children not yet being born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Elohim might be according to the election. Maybe the election might not stand of works, but him that calleth. It was said to her that the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I what? Amen. What shall we say then? Mm-hmm. Is there unlawfulness with Elohim? Mm-hmm. Elohim forbid. Mm-hmm. 
For he said to Moses, what did he say to Moses? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. All right, somebody go um, Deuteronomy 33, verse 19. Let's get a precept for that. Deuteronomy. Uh, 33, verse 19. I think, hope I didn't write it down wrong. And they... Read it. Huh? You want to read it? Yeah, you're going to read it. They shall call the people unto the mountain, and they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness. Nah, that's not it. Hold on. I know I wrote it down wrong. Hold on a second, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do I always do that? All right. I meant, um, I meant uh, 13 and 17. I put 33, verse 3. 13 verse 17. Sorry about that, y'all. That's actually 13 verse 17. I put the wrong thing down. And there shall and there shall cleave now to the cursed thing of thine hand. And to Elohim or to the master may turn from the fierceness of his anger and shew thy mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee and he that sworn unto thy fathers. All right, and it's another one, too. Hold on a second. What is the other one? I, why did I write it down wrong? Sorry, y'all. Hold on a second. All right, hold on. You got the right one. That's one of them, but it's a better one. Passions, that's what it is. But anyway, um, y'all get the context. Hold on a second. Because I don't know why I wrote that. I wrote that down wrong for it. Because basically the other scripture I'm saying says the same thing. But anyway, but for time, let's keep going. All right, so... And I'll give you that the exact precept I had written down in um, later on. So let's keep going. So we had Romans 9. 16. We had 16? Mm -hmm. All right. 17. For the scripture says in the Pharaoh, even the same pur purpose I raised thee up, that I might show thy power in thee, that thy name might be declared throughout the earth. So this is what he's going back to when he says, um, Moses says he will have mercy upon who we have mercy and compassion who we have compassion. When he says, um, um, he gives the element of Pharaoh. So why was Pharaoh raised up? Somebody tell me. The glory of God. So Pharaoh was somebody that he didn't have mercy on. Right. right? And his whole purpose of not having mercy on him was to show his glory. Yeah. Right? So basically this is what he's getting at. When he says that the most high have mercy upon who we have mercy, there's certain people that he sets up. He allows them to be in their wickedness. Mm -hmm. So when, when he get ready to, to, to proclaim his judgment, then he'll be able to show his glory or show his hand or show how powerful he is. Mm -hmm. So let's keep reading. He's going to explain that. 18. Therefore, he hath mercy on whom he hath mercy, and he, whom he hardeneth, he hardeneth. For what thou say unto, what thou say then unto me, why doth yet he find fault? Because somebody else would be like, something's wrong with that. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, man, he hardened his heart. That's hardcore, man. You're like, maybe he's going to turn around, but the most high heart in his heart. He could, so he had to do the things that he did. It, yeah. There's no way he could have got out of it. Mm -hmm. But again, who can we judge? Who, how, how, how can we judge the most high? How can we say that he don't know what he's doing? That's what, that's what Shiloh is asking you. Yeah. How can you um, question the work of the most high? Right. Let's keep going. Would thou say then unto me, why doth yet ye find fault? Mm -hmm. For he, who have resisted his will? In other words, um, Pharaoh didn't even have a, have a, um, have a say in this. Mm -hmm. The most high just hard in his heart. Listen to what he says. Nay, but old man, when thou art thou that repliest against Elohim, in other words, what you got to say against the Most High? Shall the thing that, that forms say to the thing that form it, why hast thou made me thus? Mm -hmm. Has the power, the potter of, have power over the clay, over the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto what? Dishonor. So, 
Going back to Esau, we know that Esau is an enemy. Oh, I guess they're waiting on me. Um, Esau is an enemy. Make sure. Oh, really? Yeah, let's make sure. Let's see if they're waiting on me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see how long we can stand here. All right. It's 104. It's 104? Yeah. So they're not waiting on me? Is anybody else in there waiting? Um, I don't think they didn't say. I don't know if it's the same people. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so it goes back to that context with Esau. So, now, if we study, and I ain't talking about when say Esau, they're talking about they bleed it, just, just white folks is Esau. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not, not even getting to that nonsense. What I'm talking about is who what Esau represents. And what Esau represents is the last day's power. Right. right? So the Most High has allowed him to rule in these end times. Yeah. They're right? Okay, okay. okay. Um, these, his, they've, they've allowed him to rule in these, in these last days mm. to... So when he brings his judgment, he's going to show his power. And if you go, we ain't got time for this, but if you go to Isaiah 60, 65, 60, I think 65. Anyway, it talks about the war that the Most High has with, with Esau and when he comes back. And again, it's not just Esau, it's, it's all the people that's confederate with Esau. So, but anyway, the context is that the Most High allow him to be in that position. So when he brings his glory, when he brings his power, that he would show everybody his might. Right, same way he did Pharaoh. So we're gonna finish this chapter and we're gonna walk out. Twenty-three. <clears throat> and that he might make known the riches of his glory on, on the vessels of mercy. Which he had what? A fair a four. So it goes back to the context. So you got one one group of people, right? Who are for um reserved to judgment. You got another people who are reserved unto glory. Right? But it's all by the hand of the most high. It's his will. And again, what, what he's giving the context is, we're not going to get all the precepts because we got to go. What the context is, is he's allowing this to happen. He's allowing the evil. You know, you, you ever remember when David, I'm going to say this, we just going to walk out so they don't be upset. You remember when um, David wrote in the Psalms and he said, um, why do the people, why do the evil, wicked prosper? He never understood why the wicked said, why? And then he, he said he stopped and he studied it and he said, he perceived the end and he, he fully got the concept of what was going on. And basically what he's saying is what Shaul is saying, that certain people, that the Most High is allowing them to do what they, whatever they're going to do. So when he when he does what he does, that he will get the glory. Donald Trump. Perfect example. Right? Perfect. So yeah, I'm sorry y'all, we didn't, we didn't get to um, finish nine. All this was rehashed, but um, on Wednesday we, we'll be here, so we, we'll we'll get through it. We we'll get through it, and I apologize for Wednesday, the people online. What time? Um, six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six. So with that being said, I'm gonna say shalom to everybody online, shalom. Shalom. everybody in the house, and y'all willing, we'll talk to y'all on Wednesday, and we'll keep it going. <laughs>